Hi, I'm Amy from Sharky's Greenhouses and Beat Your Neighbor Fertilizer. It's almost spring, I promise. I saw the first robin out in the yard, and of course, we're starting to see all the Easter lilies. Um, so today we're gonna talk about the Easter lilies and how to care for them and what to do with them after Easter. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna talk about is just the normal uh, water temperature and light that the Easter lilies like. As far as light, Easter lilies will bloom in bright light. Once they start blooming, you can really put them anywhere in your house as far as your decorations go. So if you want them a little bit further in by a fireplace to sit by a little cute rabbit, you can do that. Um, just let them start blooming before you move them. Temperatures, household temperatures are great between that like 65 75 degrees you don't want to have it too warm because they're gonna they're gonna bloom out faster the warmer it is as far as water now that's the thing I get asked all the time is how much water do I give the lily everybody says how much water do I give it I can't give you an exact amount I know you'd love for me to say give it one cup per day every other day I can't do that because everybody's house is different. The light, the temperature, uh, the drafts that go through the house, and let alone the plant itself is kind of like a human where it, some plants will be dry and some will be a little bit more moist. So I'm gonna teach you how to check the watering so you can see the signs of what to look for. That way you'll know whether your Easter lily needs a drink or whether you're giving it too much. So the first obvious sign is if the leaves or the flowers are super droopy and kind of look like wilty, that can be overwatering and it can be underwatering. But if the leaves are starting to turn more of a yellow tone down towards the base, it's probably overwatering. A great way to check that is just take your plant, lift it up, and if it feels really light like a bag of popcorn, well then that means that you haven't given it enough to drink. Give it a nice drink. Don't douse it. Don't say, oh, you're so dry, I'm gonna just pour everything into you. Give it a nice drink, just make sure the top of the soil is nice and moist, and then walk away, and then tomorrow check it again, and you'll know whether you have to give it another drink. If you pick it up, and it feels like a bag of like heavy sugar, and you're saying, oh, but it looks droopy. That's obviously overwatering. It should never be like soggy, wet soil. It should be just like moist to the touch, and there should not be water sitting, whether you use it in the foil, like what it's in now, or if you put it into a basket. You shouldn't see um, water sitting at the bottom. Lilies like to have their roots dry, so you have to have like well-drained soil. They want a drink, but they don't want to sit in that drink. Otherwise, they'll start rotting. So as far as watering, start out with, you know, a small amount, get that soil moist on the top, and then just lift it up and put it somewhere in between that bag of popcorn and the bag of sugar. And you should be spot on as far as watering for the plant. Once you kind of get that down, you can check the plant every every two days is probably just sufficient. Um, they do go through a lot of water when they're blooming, so make sure you check that frequently. The beautiful thing about the Easter lily is these brilliant white blooms. The foliage is, is pretty, but it's really about the blooms. So how do we keep the blooms on the plant longer looking nice and white? That's the key. Well first, you're gonna take a look at your plant and you can see this one has lots of blooms and then it has lots to come that are here. This one, and I'll bring, I'll, I'm gonna snip it off with a pair of scissors. This one is a spent bloom. So we're going to take that off right to the base and we're just gonna clip that off and take that flower out of there. The rest of them, as you can see, have the pollen that is in it. Anybody who has been around lilies know that that pollen is very um, fluffy and sticky and it stains everything. So our funeral directors, when we're working in the floral business, they do not like lilies that have pollen in them because it gets on their expensive suits. I have a tip of how to get that off the linens or a dress or expensive suits. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, and you can wear a glove or you can do it by hand. We're gonna take and pull that pollen right out of the lily on each and every one of them. 
Now, when the lily just starts to open, the pollen will be um, more firm. It doesn't have that fluffy, sticky substance of the actual pollen. The little buds will be like a firm bud. So if you can get your fingers in there right away when they open, you won't have all the powdery mess to deal with and they just come out really easy. But that changes in like a few hours. It'll change from that, the flower opening and then being firm to all of a sudden being fluffy and, and sticky and having that yellow powder everywhere. So talking about that yellow powder, uh, you're gonna wanna have a cloth to wipe your hands because you don't wanna wipe them on your pants. You wipe it on your pants, you're gonna have a stain on your pants. Very hard to get out. The flower itself, and it's around the outside of the flower on the white petal. It just looks a little messy. If you take a Chanel stem, or as crafters know them as pipe cleaners, and you just lightly brush over it, it magically erases that color. And that same technique works if you do get it on your clothing. Do not take a rag and try to rub it out and then use the Chanel stem. That won't work. You have to leave it like it is and just take that Chanel stem and lightly rub over it and it will it'll kind of bring it up right into the bristles of the Chanel stem. So the big key on this is the sooner you take that pollen out of the lily, one, it makes it so you don't have a mess everywhere, but two, it helps the flower stay nicer longer. And the reason why is it's trying to pollinate itself. It's trying to get the pollen to be in the center and start to reproduce. If you're taking that out, the hormone slows down. Now, the bloom will still expire. It just will take longer for it to expire, maybe by a day or two. But that's a day or two that you can have of enjoyment of that lily in your home. So the question is, what do I do with the lily once all the blooms are spent and they're done, do I just throw it away or, you know, because it's just a stem with leaves. The answer is, take it to your backyard. Take it and plant it. So like an iris or a tulip, the lilies are a bulb. When you plant a lily that has been bloomed for Easter, you're going to cut it off halfway up and leave the green leaves and plant it just ground level. So as where the, where the soil is, you're just gonna go right at ground level here. Uh, plant it somewhere in a sunny in the morning, more shady in the afternoon. Now, are they gonna bloom at Easter? No, they're not gonna bloom at Easter. They're going to go through a whole cycle. It'll look really bad cut down and the, these will turn all yellow and gnarly. In fall, you're gonna cut it back all the way to about an inch above the ground. And then next spring, you'll see it to start emerge. It won't bloom until probably midsummer. Then you'll have beautiful white lilies, maybe out by a barn or a garden shed, anywhere in the yard. And they're just a beautiful, stunning reminder of the Easter season. Be sure to check out BeatYourNeighbor.com. We have lots of videos on there and how-to tips on gardening and the care and some videos of just what we do during the greenhouse season so you'll be able to see that. Also, make sure you hit like and subscribe and comment. Tell us what your favorite signs of spring is. Mine is seeing the robins out in the yard. So let us know in your area, what do you see first that reminds you that spring is coming? Have a great day.